There must be 50 ways to get killed in a sword fight. Some of those ways are dumber than others. Here's five of the dumbest. There are technical errors, there are tactical errors, and there are strategic errors. It all boils down to doing the wrong thing, doing it at the wrong time, or doing it against the wrong opponent. Technical errors are for losers. They include losing your balance, losing your position, losing your focus, and losing your distance. There's one cure-all for technical errors, practice. Patient, precise, loving practice. And a hell of a lot of it. Don't just practice till you get it right. Practice until you can never get it wrong. Practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. So make sure you train the way you want to fight, because you will fight the way you train. A tactical error is doing the right thing at the wrong time. You fail to follow one or more of the five tactical principles and make a decision ex recto. But mostly, it's because you don't feel the steel. When I say tactical, you think tactile. You read your opponent's intentions through the blade, choose your response with your hand and not with your head. There's a time for thinking, and this ain't it. This is where you have to be relaxed, alert, in the present moment, and with no expectations. A strategic error is doing the right thing, doing it the right way, but doing it against the wrong opponent. We call this the don't bring a knife to a gunfight principle. Your technique may be flawless, but you're making the wrong tactical choice because you're in the wrong strategic position. The most obvious example is the shorter fighter who's out fighting instead of in fighting. That's a losing proposition no matter how good your technique is or how savvy your tactical choices might otherwise be. The cure for this problem is to know your strategic position and employ those tactics and techniques appropriate to that position. Using the right strategy doesn't guarantee victory, but using the wrong strategy just about guarantees defeat. And now, without further ado, my five favorite fencing fuck-ups. Fuck-up number one, cutting when you should thrust. A thrust is faster and reaches farther than a cut. A cut takes two tempos, a thrust only takes one. A cut has greater amplitude and it's easier to see it coming. A cut uses the center of percussion for best effect, effectively making your reach six inches shorter. The thrust uses only the first two inches of the point. If you cut against an opponent who thrusts, it's like playing checkers against an opponent who's playing chess. Nice knowing you. Fuck up number two, getting your body ahead of your blade. The goal is to move your point closer to your opponent's body, not to move your body closer to your opponent's point. But it's amazing how many people will do exactly that. It's probably the most common error in fencing. It happens because you're excited, tired, or just poorly trained. Your sword is also your shield. You use your shield to protect your body, not the other way around. It makes no sense at all for you to have it behind you rather than in front of you. The simplest, easiest, and most important thing you can do is just extend your arm and aim at the bad guy. Do that first, do that right away, and do it all the time. You'll derive two benefits. First, you'll trigger your opponent's self-defense reflex, fixing his mind on defending himself instead of attacking you. Second, you make it impossible for him to attack you without throwing himself onto your point. He has to move your blade out of the way first. When he tries to move your blade, you deceive and hit him. 
If you fail in deceiving his blade, you're well extended and you're able to make a small, very fast parry and your point is close to his body for the repost. In the old days, the standard dueling advice was stick your arm out and step back. This is why. My mama done told me when I was in knee pants, never make a frontal assault against a fortified position unless you have neutralized your opponent's offensive capabilities. Or in French, never attack without having control of your opponent's blade. There are several ways to do that, some physical, some psychological. But never guess where your opponent's blade is. It might be in your liver. You know where your opponent's blade is because you're the one who put it there. So, fuck up number three is attacking without having control of your opponent's blade. Now, technically, in a duel, if you wound your opponent, the polite thing to do is have everybody pause and bring the surgeon in to examine the wound and determine whether the gentleman is able to continue or not. But as Mother Teresa once noted, shit happens fast. Death from a sword wound is rarely if ever instantaneous. Your opponent might live long enough to make you his prom date to Valhalla. If his wound is mortal, You've just transmogrified your opponent into the most dangerous adversary there is, one with nothing left to lose. You don't want your eulogy to end with, and then he got killed by a dead guy. So, as they say, protect yourself at all times, especially when you think you're safe. Whether you hit or whether you miss, you recover to your guard. And notice I say recover because you, um, recover. Continue the phrase until you're at least woofed. W-O-O-F-D stands for way out of fencing distance. And that brings us to fuck up number five. Reacting instead of acting. When you're reacting to what your opponent does, you're allowing your opponent to be the locus of control of your behavior you have to do the exact opposite. I've seen fencers who would flinch at every twitch, wink, and fart. You could make them parry by email. Capo Ferro called it, talking about your opponent's feints. He said your opponent can make a feint out of distance or within distance. If he feints when he's out of distance, ignore it. He's too far away to hurt you. If he feints within distance, as he faints, kill him. Well, I know that's five, but we, we can't go without mentioning the grand fromage of fuck-ups. Underestimating your opponent. The grand prize for the worst possible mistake you can make goes to underestimating your opponent or overestimating yourself, those two are functionally the same thing. You may not have much respect for your opponent, but you'd better respect the sword in his hand because it can kill you just by accident. In some ways, an unskillful opponent is more dangerous than a skillful one. An unskilled opponent doesn't do what he should do because he doesn't know what he should do. And since he doesn't know what he should do, he might do any damn fool thing and unpredictable is dangerous. The cure for this one is simple. Let some of the air out of your ego. Fear no one, but respect everyone. As a very wise man once said, kid, there's a thousand ways you can fuck this up. And if you can think of half of those ways, you're a genius and you ain't no genius. So in my opinion, 
The very best way to avoid these and all the rest of the deadly mistakes you can make in a fight is very simple. Don't fight. If you'd like more details on some of the topics we covered in this video, check out the links in the description.